Sam and Laura Adams have been commuting from Couillard Shores to Michigan for years. As part of their commute, they cross the absolutely massive Marquette Bridge and its toll complex daily. One day, while waiting to get through the tolls, the two have two massive realizations. Number one, it's madness that the tolls aren't automated in 2026. And number two, it's absolutely wild that there isn't a service station, motel, or a place to grab a meal near the interchange. In fact, they've always gotten their fuel and couillard chores from this service station. That's not helping anyone passing through the area. Today, we're going to remedy all those issues and attempt to reach our next population milestone with a bit more development. Let's jump right in. Hello, welcome back to City Planner Plays, where we are building Couillard Shores in Nicolay Bay. And today, we're going to focus on the people coming through the area, not necessarily the people living in it. I suppose outside of Sam and Laura Adams, who will be founding this gas station. It's going to be an exciting episode where we do a number of things around this interchange complex to make it really feel like a part of the community. It's also going to be a little bit of a love letter to the content creator packs. We're going to incorporate some assets from the brand new mid-century modern content creator pack, from the modern Japan content creator pack, maybe even a, a little bit from the University City content creator pack and the Green Cities DLC. So a lot of really fun stuff is gonna happen around here. We're gonna take a bit of a break from Couillard Shores, the expansion here and the industries. We'll get to that in the next one. So let's dive right in. The first thing we need to do is expand our city. And we don't have a lot of money. So hoping that this tile right here, because we've got to buy this, I hope it isn't all that much. Let's do that. And 7,200. That's a pretty significant chunk of our budget. Not a quarter, but just a little bit under. But we've got to do it. Got to do what you got to do. And we now own it. So let's come right down and start to plan out what we're going to do. So I want to look at the modern Japan service station. So that is underneath our unique buildings, content creator pack. And if we come in here, it's the service station and restaurant. Now this is a large asset. It's going to take quite a bit of space. So we're going to either need to convert part of Nicolay drive to be just a, a local road and put it over here. Although if we take a look, we should look at our contours and we should look at our space here. And we don't have enough space to put it here. We'd have to really carve into the cliffside to put it here. And the same thing here. So truthfully, this Thomas Street segment might be our only option. <laughs> so something that uh, we're going to need to contend with. And in fact, I think our decision is made for us. The nice thing about this location, too, is it will have excellent visibility. If we're down here, you'd be able to look on down. So that means that we need to not place very much landscaping right here. Or if we place some, it needs to be pretty modest. So we are going to build a frontage road here as well to try to keep traffic, local traffic, off from the highway. And uh, to do that, we're going to back this out just a little bit. We're also going to be placing our diners and our motels along here. And we're going to need to think about where those go as well. But we'll get to that in just a moment. Let's level out the ground a little bit so we can build our frontage road. Because if we take a look, we're going to need at least two units for our frontage road. I'd like to keep two units minimum in between Nicolay Drive and that frontage road which means that we are coming up about two meters. So we're we have to grade this first. There we go. So the grade is no longer a concern, so I'm gonna turn that off. What is gonna be a concern is I want this to loop all the way around. The reason for that is we've got to look at our asset and figure out the way that this would work best. First of all, I see a couple of opportunities. It looks like there's a landscaped island right here, or landscaping island. We could plant some bushes or trees there. Same thing back here. There's parking back here, but no way to access it. So we're going to have to have this road go all the way around it. Look at that. What is that? Deer? Is it going under the highway? Oh, it's a it's a wolf. <laughs> Sorry, got distracted there. Got distracted. All right. So let's start out and we're going to build a frontage road. So we're going to go with this two lane road with wide sidewalks. The reason I'm going to use that is I do not. Well, actually, we could go with the median. Maybe we'll go with that one. We don't want the wide sidewalks. We're going to use our parallel road tool and mirror a bit of this. I think I'm going to come all the way down to here. And we could try to do this in the vanilla way, but it, it's going to be so much easier to just use our parallel road tool. We have mods at our disposal. Let's use them. So we'll pop into our unified UI, go into our network multi tool, and then into our create parallel mode. Then we'll just pick our first intersection there, and then we're going to push plus to back this out. I want this to be nice and tight up against the service station. 
And I'm still, I'm not sure, I'm not sold on this being the right option for us yet, but we're gonna give it a shot. Hit enter, and get that in place. And it's looking pretty good. We're not connected here though. So that's gonna be a concern for us. Not a big deal, we'll back out. Draw this right in. That's not a very large throat length. That's our main concern here. This might actually work out okay for us. I'm gonna turn Anarchy on for just a, actually we'll wait, 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 wait. Let's extend this out. And then we'll get this around the building. And we may, we have parking lot roads and we actually may use those in this area now that I'm thinking about it. So let's adjust our heights. This popped up just a little bit. So control H as I select the node after hitting M to get in to move it. And we are moving in a good direction. Looking good, looking real good. I am going to grab this. We're gonna use our picker to copy this right here and mirror that same sort of junction here. So that's a nice looking frontage road in my opinion. But let's not stop there. Let's think about a couple of other things to, to really liven this up a bit. So we don't need a parking lot here. We've got our service station, that's fine. What we need is a little bit of detailing to make this look just a little bit nicer. Let's come into here. We're gonna just use some of our new, uh, new trees and assets. Go into our line mode, into our fence mode, and let's grab this. So we're gonna use some flowers here. We'll have to turn on our anarchy. And I kinda want this to feel like a wall. So we're gonna turn our spacing down. Just a nice thick wall of flowers. There we go. That's looking good. Back here, young Linden. Cause, <laughs> cause we have to. <laughs> cause it's the very best tree in the new vanilla version of the game. Looking good, looking good, feeling good, liking this. Just a little bit of detail makes it all feel better. So from here, you'd be able to see this. And if you wanted to come and, and go to the gas station, you come through, oh, that is ugly. Something is happening. So I've had a couple of issues since the new update. Things just kind of changing their heights and getting wonky. So I've had to, to, to come through and make a couple of changes. I'm not sure why this is happening, but it is very frustrating. I will be up front with you. Let's get this fixed. Okay, I think we've got it all fixed there, so that's looking and feeling much better. So, one of those things that uh, you just kind of have to deal with. Hopefully, I don't have to keep fixing this. I don't know why that's happening. I, I noticed that when I loaded into the build, too, that there were a couple of spots where it just seemed like the height data was not retained. I don't, I don't, I don't know what the deal is with that, but, uh, you know, growing pains with new mods, things will improve over time. And uh, hopefully uh, that's one of those things that uh, gets better. <laughs> so there we go. So now that we've got this, I do want to go through and put just a bit of landscape. We don't have to landscape here. And in fact, it's probably as much as we need. I would expect that they would have a sign, a large sign explaining that it's a service station. They might even lobby for a sign right about here saying next right, come on down. That said, we don't have any assets like that. So we'll just have to to pretend a little bit, <laughs> that's okay. I wanna put a few trees over here though. So I had a couple questions about what is inside of this set. And basically in my forestry brush, I have generic pine trees at 65%. I've got this green tree. So I'm using a mix of old stuff and new stuff, the live oak, oak. I could have probably gone heavier on the pine trees just in this part of the, uh, this part of the world. But uh, I like the way that some of these bushier <laughs> things look a little bit more than the pine trees. So that's why it's a little bit heavy on that. But you can see a good mixture of both older and newer vanilla assets. I don't have any custom trees in here. I, I don't want to do that. I want this to be a lightweight build. So that's why we have this. But so along here, I'm just coming through and adding a bit of landscaping right along here. And to me, that's pretty good. Maybe a little bit too far, in fact, because as people are slowing down, we want them to see the, the this this wonderful service station right here. But I would expect that we have some landscape, kind of carving it out, and then we keep some views of the water, so we'll keep that in mind as well, so that as you are waiting at the service station, look out at the water. The other thing that we're gonna do is, you know, this is 2026. There are a number of mandates that are mandating a, a switch over to electric vehicles. So I feel like there's some value in adding electric vehicle charging in this area as well. Let's look at our contours and see if we can work in a flat location to have some EV charging. Cause that would be absolutely necessary at a location like this. In fact, there are currently a number of grant programs available 
uh, through the federal government in the US that allow this. And I know that Europe is even more progressive about this. Let's go ahead and get in an EV charging station. We're gonna go into here and we're gonna look at our Green Cities DLC assets. And I'm going to find the charging station. There we go. That is looking much better. Now we've got our charging station. We've got uh, our service station here. So you would be able to come through here, charge up, go grab a bite to eat at the restaurant. And uh, that is a very, very good change. And in fact, I think we've seen someone at this service station. Let's pop in and uh, see what Philip with two L's is up to. So we've already learned that Philip with two L's likes spending time in cities other than Verde Beach. Philip's newest obsession is Nicolay Bay. In fact, he just made his way to the new service station and spent a couple of hours stealing people's passwords on the public Wi-Fi. And though the cops found him out this time, he's got calves of steel and is going to be able to bike away. So how do you protect yourself from creeps like Philip? By getting NordVPN, which provides a fast and secure internet connection wherever you are in the world. NordVPN has over 5,500 super fast servers worldwide that can help you create a private, secure, safe browsing experience so that cyber snoops like Philip will not be able to steal your personal info. But wait, there's more. NordVPN can also make the internet more fun, allowing you to access region locked content by giving you the ability to change your internet location in seconds. Did you know that in Germany they replaced Big Bird with this bear named Samson? I didn't either until I got NordVPN. If all of this sounds good to you, head to nordvpn.com slash cityplanner for a great deal on NordVPN that includes a risk-free 30-day money-back guarantee. That's nordvpn.com slash cityplanner. All right, that guy's always up to no good. <laughs> so let's get back to it. We've got our service station, and I think that this is uh, a layout that would make a ton of sense for this area, but there's more that we need and more that we can do. So I think that we need to look at having some diners as well. Uh, so at least one place to grab a bite to eat. Now I think I, I didn't really explain why I added two entry points here. I didn't want to cul-de-sac this area, especially considering that there could be fires at a service station. You want to make sure that there are uh, uh, places to, to leave. Now the interesting thing about this asset is it is a service station. I don't really see any gas pumps. I guess that we we have to <laughs> we have to make believe. It's uh it's an interesting conundrum. <laughs> so we'll just uh. We'll have to use our imagination there. <laughs> All right, for our diner, I wanna pop in and we're gonna set up our parking lot roads first. So let's set up our service road. Again, we've got some terrain challenges here. So I'm going to level this out and we're not gonna develop this entire area yet. Sometimes you end up with development occurring and just stop, just kind of stopping. So we'll bring this along here. Okay, that was a pain in the butt because I screwed it up. <laughs> so things are looking better. Although look at that. Now that I've played with node controller, <laughs> my spacing is off again. I give up. <laughs> All right, so we need to get rid of that parking lot asset right there. We're gonna draw in some of our accessible parking stalls. Absolutely necessary right up front. And then I control X to release it and we're just going kind of rogue. And now that we've got a little bit of a height issue here, we're gonna pull this down and hopefully that fixes everything for us. So control H lining up over here, just a slight change. And it looks like we are sitting pretty right now. And I'm feeling good about that. So we did all of this because we're going to place a diner right in front of it. That's a lot of parking, but this is going to be a very popular diner. That's what we're expecting anyway. And it's because we have wolves again, eating right by our diner. <laughs> Let's go through here. And this is under the parks menu, content creator pack assets. And we've got these roadside diners. So we are going to have to rotate this around, but I'm not overly concerned. And one of the cool things about this asset is that it actually spawns different names every time. Not every time, but a number of times. <laughs> so let's rotate this around and get it in place. And there are parking stalls in front of this. We're going to remove those, uh, but let's, let's check out and see what names we can get. So we're resetting this and you see we get Maddie's, Valco's, Janet's, Bluebird. I like Bluebird. I think we're going to go with Bluebird and then we're going to come in to Bob 
That is Alt B, click on this, and I wanna get rid of the parking stalls. We've got a ton in the back, no need to have any in the front. So we'll turn the probability of these down to nothing. Same thing with our EV parking stalls, and we'll get rid of these parking spaces as well. There we go, and there are bike racks in the front too, which is a nice little, uh, nice little change of pace. I appreciate that. All right, and real deer just chilling out front. Lots of wildlife in this area. Feeling good about that. We're gonna place a couple of trees up here just to bring some life into the area. We're not gonna have a lot right here, uh, and I think that that would be absolutely desired. We don't want a bunch of landscaping. We are gonna probably have a ditch right here as well, so we'll lower this as much as we're able to without it looking crazy so that we could we could collect some of the water that would run off from all of this impervious into that ditch. Okay, so my initial inclination was to go hard with landscaping and I just have to fight that sometimes because I can go extreme. <laughs> so it's it's valuable to, to, to rethink things sometimes and make sure that, you know, kind of ground truth what you're up to to make sure it actually makes sense. There we go, looking good. And now we have a future developable lot, just kind of empty, it kind of a, a ends down here. I'm even okay just leaving this peter out down here. That's completely fine. Now we, we need some motels as well, uh, but there's gonna be a couple of concerns. Number one, we have power here. Uh, it's all coming from this. And we have water right here, but we're gonna run out soon. We've got a lot of residential demand and what I think we're gonna do is extend some of our residential down the coast and get it over to this development. We're going to reserve our motels for across the road. And I think that that's going to be a nice uh, kind of change of pace. They're also not quite as deep as the service center and they won't have nearly as much parking. So I think that we can carve into the hillside just a little bit and make this work. Okay, so let's jump power with residential development. So we're just going to convert this segment of the highway. We're going to use our picker to grab the same road that we have down here. We might need to think about this in the future. Is this the most appropriate road for this area? But for the time being, we're just going to roll with it. And we're going to convert this all the way down. Now, let me be completely blunt with you. In reality, I think that we would just have zoning along the highway. I really dislike that. In fact, I want to know in the comments, let me know, should I just zone along the highway. That would be an easy thing to do. We've got our zoning tools available to us. And if we're going for realism, that's probably what we do is just zone along there. But there are some places where we can deviate and say that we could do better. <laughs> so we're for the time being, we're, we're going to convert it to an urban section and uh, we'll see how you guys feel about that. And I'm going to add in a couple of places where we can have some homes that go a little bit deeper back here. So we'll have some larger lots, that's fine, but we should also, where we have the ability to get a few more homes in, we don't have a lot of developable space in Couillard Shores. So let's uh, do what we can to add a few more developable lots. And this is why you don't have anarchy on. <laughs> now, I didn't create bulbs last time for the cul-de-sacs. And I think we should do that this time. So I'm going to apparently inadvertently remove my node there. <laughs> we'll pull this out and then I'm gonna go into my node controller at a crossing. And then we can come into here at the end here and stretch this out. And what that does is create a cul-de-sac bulb for ourselves. Hit M, go back into move it, pull this back. And I have to pull both of these nodes, the one that I created and the bulb itself. And now we can place homes around there. So we're gonna have to manually place those homes, but the effect is gonna be really good. We'll do the exact same thing here. Okay, so there we go. We've added a couple of cul-de-sacs and, you know, the Libra sort of thing over here. We, it would probably be warranted. And you get a little bit of a, a bump so that you can have more homes around there. So that is a way to maximize the amount of land that we're using. I think they honestly look pretty darn good. 
So we are going to add in some homes down here. So I'm gonna zone where we can, because honestly, if we can zone, that is the way to go. Okay, so I've added a whole bunch of zoned property down here. We gotta get some water pipes underneath the road and I'm gonna speed this up a little bit because we've got a lot of demand but things aren't necessarily filling in just yet. Now my big concern is that things don't fill in uh, in the direction that I want them to. So instead of filling in from the Cuillard Shore side, they start filling in from the other side. But we'll have to, we'll have to wait that out and see what happens. Okay, so things are filling in. I didn't, there are a couple of zoning decisions I made. First of all, I didn't zone anywhere around here. We're gonna do a little bit of that now. So we'll fill in some of these that we can, but I wanted to place some of these manually. In fact, this is a spot where I'm gonna place it manually. We will maximize the amount that we can have right here. And then instead of zoning along the highway, we're gonna zone inside of this eyebrow because uh, in, inside of this little neighborhood type area. Oh, and there we go, small city, 2,200 population. We get trains, we get monorails, we get cable cars. We get big business benefactor policies and small business enthusiasts. We get lots of really fun things. The train station is gonna be important to us. Not because I think passenger rail is gonna be a huge thing here. Probably have one station, maybe, throughout the entire area. But I do think that we need to get a cargo train terminal in here at some point. We're also getting a number of new parks, some high capacity uh, buildings, and we get some new power options. We don't have any rivers that could really uh, benefit from a hydroelectric plant, so that's not really a, a thing here. But uh, it's still nice to see uh, ourselves growing, and we've got lots of money now. And really, that's the number one benefit. Again, we're going to speed ourselves up, and I want to come through here, and this time we're going to look at our growables and try to randomize some of these in here. Now, I wanna figure out the right term to use to get just some normal growables in. Maybe level one D attached. That looks like it's a, gonna be a pretty good fit for us. So now I should be able to select the size that I want. So we'll go four by four. So we've actually only got a couple if I do that. So I'm going to remove one of the one of the limiters over here. And now I have the question mark set as my randomize button. So I'm gonna randomize a couple of these and we're just gonna pull these over. So I'll hit M, grab this and place this at the end of a cul-de-sac. And I can't forget to control H to the end of the bulb so that it fits appropriately. And then we have our cul-de-sacs over here in our eyebrow. So we are going to again, grab these, move them over. Control H to the bulb. I'm gonna use move it to clone this. So I'll just duplicate this. There we go. Now around here, again, I'm gonna go into my detached options and kind of randomize some through here. And I think we've gotta go smaller. So I'm gonna go with my two buys. There we go, I think that's looking really good. So I'm sure that a number of you are wondering, when is he gonna finally, finally, finally start using uh, non-dirt roads, <laughs> some paved roads? Soon, I promise we're getting there, but for the time being, I'm trying to be very fiscally prudent and very, very thoughtful about my budget because that is the very biggest struggle in the beginning. You can get yourself into a sinkhole and never recover from it, and I've lost many cities <laughs> by, inadvertently spending too much money. So through here, we are gonna grade this back, have some steeper cliffs. There would probably be a retaining wall back here. I don't have any retaining walls in this asset set, and I think it's fine. We'll just have this, the cliffs here, and it will look completely, completely fine. I like the cliff textures. I know that uh, I've seen that most of you seem to like the cliff textures. There are certainly some of you that that do not, and I apologize for that. <laughs> but we've got we've to gotta do something. And uh, I think that it's better to have a cliff te texture that I don't feel like covering than, uh, than anything else. <laughs> so that's why, that's why I've gone through and I, I've really paid attention to, to the way that the theme looks. So I'm feeling pretty good about it. All right, we've got one more 
home that we need to clone here. All right, there we go. We don't have a, a huge number of assets to work with, but I think by randomizing them and just kind of trying to make them fit a little bit differently, you can make them feel much more like custom assets. And I don't really have a huge problem with most of the vanilla assets. The biggest concern I have is the trees. And, you know, we could always come in with Bob and Alt-B, click on these, go into our replacement mode, find the trees, and go search for MP9, and replace these with things like the horse chestnut if we wanted to, the bush we could replace with one of the newer bushes or some of the grasses, whatever we would prefer to do. But that is something that I think down the line, I'm gonna, I, I, I'm gonna ask a poll question after that, or actually, it might be live right now. I want to know if I should bring in some custom cars. Something that was requested as one of the top comments in the first video is, could you please put together a custom car set? If I do that, I would probably stream and add in the custom cars and then replace all of the trees through here as well. It's one of those time consuming things that isn't necessarily, like, it, it, isn't, it isn't necessarily the most fun thing to do in a video, but I think I could chat with you guys and do that at the same time and it would be a perfectly fine way to uh, spend our day. All right, so we are running out of power, which is interesting. I would not have anticipated this being a problem. So what we're gonna do is see if there's anything that we can do to connect up here. We still have some electricity availability. So if we were to connect this up, I think that we might be okay. So let's do that. Okay, so for the first time, all of our power systems are now united and it appears that you've got enough overhead to exist for just a moment. <laughs> this isn't the perfect solution, but it's gonna be perfectly fine for us. Let's add in some landscaping back here. Okay, so what I've tried to do is add a bit of landscaping in between the homes so that you add that little bit of separation there and look at that. We've got crime, we've got trash. This is really becoming a lovely community. <laughs> so I am concerned. Uh, now that I see the trash thing come up, is it just that we're too spread out or are we out? We're out of capacity. So our garbage processing status is in a pretty rough spot right now. We are going to do something that will not be loved and we're gonna increase that capacity because we need it. Look at our contours to make sure. Yeah, we're going up a hill. Which means that we're going to do something that's even less loved. I think I'm going to add an incinerator right in this area. Right across from this factory. And a recycling center right here. So that creates a lot of noise. It's an unfortunate set of uses to have right there. But it is in an area that already has these kind of noxious uses, so you're concentrating them, which, let's be real, that really stinks for everyone who lives in this area, but it is logical that you'd see those consolidating in, in an area, and I think that uh, this is probably where it happens. So hopefully that fixes our garbage processing. We're uh, right in the center there. We have some policies, and that's a good reminder. First of all, to expand the community, so we're annexing all of this property into Couillard Shores. And I'm gonna pull in this area as well. The main reason this is a game mechanic standpoint thing, I want to look at our policies now and we are going to have our new automated toll policy apply only to this toll, not the other side. We aren't controlling what Michigan's doing right now only what Superior is doing, and they've decided to automate this toll. The other thing that we're going to want to take a look at is I want to take a look at a recycling policy. So that will increase. So we've got two policies that we can look at. One, recycling. It'll reduce our tax income and reduce our garbage accumulation. That one's probably going to ding us quite a bit, so maybe that's not the one that we want. But we do have recycled plastics, which is pretty inexpensive and increases the efficiency of that new recycling center that we placed. So we're absolutely going to do that one. It'll cost us just a little bit if we still have problems with garbage. And we'll take a look right now. That got us out of the yellow. We could implement the other policy. It's just going to really ding us in terms of the amount of money that we're making weekly. And we, we really can't handle that right now from a financial standpoint. So 
we will uh, do what we can. And I'm noticing a couple of things, and I think that this is mentioned a couple of times in the comments as well. There's some dark spots around here. That is me missing something. So I'm going to take care of that as well. This is sand. I need to I need to improve the sand around there. So I'm just going to pop in and fix that right now. We'll be right back. Okay, it's not perfect, but it is considerably better. And you know, the, the concern is that if I get too close, I actually put sand on the cliff. And that doesn't make a ton of sense. So there's going to be a bit of imperfection there, but I can make it as good as I can. And that is pretty darn good. So I'm feeling good about this, but we've got to add in a couple more things. So first of all, I think that we need some hotels. So we're going to do the exact same thing uh, with our parallel road tool. The big thing is we don't want to connect into Smithway. So let's go ahead. We are going to, again, grab our road. And actually, I'm going to upgrade this as, as we're over here. I'm going to get rid of collision, which is always dangerous. We're actually, uh... <laughs> now we'll get rid of collision. And I'm going to turn Anarchy on. Probably have some trees to get rid of. Or I'll get very lucky and have no problems. There, that gets rid of all of the cross crosswalks and, and all of the craziness. Now that looks bad. And I was worried about that. So this parking lot road doesn't play nicely with the highway, but it does play nicely with a normal city street. We can node controller these crossings off. That's fine. There, that's a lot better. That's a lot better. All right. So now we're going to need to grade a little bit to get some of our hotels in here, but I want to see how big these are. So we're going to create our parallel road tool or parallel road first. So let's select this. Then we'll go into our unified UI and create a parallel road again. Now I forgot the distance over here. So I'm just going to move it over here, mirror it 32 tab now it's 32 on the other side perfect hit enter and we're in place and i forgot collision on because that's what i do so <laughs> we're going to turn that off get rid of my anarchy and we'll have to get rid of some trees not the end of the world oh wow it went a long ways up it decided to really spite me <laughs> so there we go hopefully we don't go any further i think we're okay all right so I'm going to go into move it, hit M, grab onto this, hold down alt so that we can pull this all the way over, control H this to this road here so that we don't have a lot of craziness going on. And now we have a nice connection. We've got this one too that we need to make. I don't believe that we have, oh, we do. I got lucky. There's a node right here on Robert Adams way, which needs a new name. We will get to that at some point soon. And let's union these. So I'm going to click on this one on Dean Street. Click on this other one on Robert Adams. And there we go. Now we have a nice unioned road. So I'm going to upgrade this. We don't have a little dirt road spot. <laughs> That's kind of uh, awkward. And now we've got our pad where we're going to place our new hotels. So I want to level this out. We've got to, we, we can't just build into the hillside like that. That's not at all reasonable. So we're going to, I'm going to go about, oh, <laughs> I'm going to go out about as far as I believe that we need to go. And then we will truth test it afterwards. Okay. And we will clean that up after the fact, but let's go back in and we're going to look at our parks menu. And now we've got all of our motels and we're going to place three. Uh, I think that that would be completely reasonable we'll try each of them so this looks like it is just about right for us and i'm not even sure that this is the orientation that we're going to keep these at so i think this is going to work out for us now interestingly i lost zoning on some of these so i'm going to need to go through and upgrade and downgrade this uh, that can happen with the parallel road tool not not something that's we need to be overly concerned about there we go good as new good as new so when I talked about the orientation of these, that really came down to obviously this building. We need to keep the orient. We need to keep it oriented towards the road, so you can pull right into the parking. This one right here, I think that we're going to spin this one around. So I'm going to move this down. We're going to spin this one so that the the sign is facing towards the road, and then we've got the pool facing towards the hill. So if you were in the pool and you're swimming, instead of seeing the road, you get this view of the hillside, looks wonderful. So we're gonna have to modify our roads to get there. 
And then for this one, it's kind of the same deal. We're gonna have parking on the side. The weird thing is actually, this one needs to spin around too. So I think on this side, there is no signage. Over here there is, and it's not along the road. So we're gonna alt this one, pull this one into place. And now this is oriented correctly, but we've got some work to do. So I'm going to use the parallel road tool again to create a road behind this. So again, I'll use the picker to select this and then we'll pop into our unified UI network, multi-tool, parallel road tool. And I'm just gonna go to about here, tab this and then pull this back. I hit enter to get that in place and we've got a bunch of trees going through here. And obviously this is going through this this building right here. Not a big deal. We're going to modify this just slightly. I'm gonna pull this up right here, and then I'm gonna add another node. So go into Network Multi-Tool, add a node right there, and then Control H to this building. Same thing here, Control H to the building. And now, one more node right here. So Control N, move it, pull this right along here, right along the side of the building. And then I'm gonna hold down Alt to get a nice curve here. Okay, so I was just doing a little bit to make myself feel good about these and then realize that everything I've just built, <laughs> it's gone up in flames. <laughs> we don't have any aerial fire protection. So we're just gonna burn, <laughs> which thankfully all of our houses seem to be okay, but boy, oh boy, that is a big fire. <laughs> and it's basically going after all of the trees I just planted. That's a little frustrating, but it's not unexpected. So we will just live with it and I will uh, just move on because <laughs> it wouldn't be one of my builds without a massive fire occurring at some point. There we go. I'm backing this up just a little bit so we can have some landscaping along the front of the building because we need to increase the flammability in this area. Otherwise, we are failing our sims. <laughs> no. Here, we've got an interesting situation. It's still not connected. I thought this was going to do it. It did not. So what this actually means to me. Oh, I get it. So it actually wants to be around the back side of the building, which is frustrating. That's not the right, it's not the most helpful side for us. We can do something like that. Now I'm gonna get rid of this street because we need parking here. And I think that we're just gonna use some of the new parking that came with this content creator pack just to see how it looks. Okay, they're kind of cool looking. I, I, it, it's it's interesting. It's definitely a different style than I'm used to, uh, but I like it. It's 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 very neat, and it definitely fits the aesthetic here. So we are going to pull these through. And why don't we? I, I wonder if I can spin these around and have them remain happy. It seems like they're okay. So the other thing that we can do, they actually match already. That's great. I think we've got one red one. It's hard to see unless we're right here. I'm gonna click on this and then just reset this a couple of times. And it's hard. I think that's okay. I think that's okay. We're gonna roll with it. And then we'll pave back here. There we go. That's looking good. Obviously, there's a couple of uh, terrain issues here. We're gonna need to come through I'm gonna select all of these buildings and align them, control H to this front road. That'll pop up, fix some of our concerns there. Our road back here is another concern. There we go. And now here, I think our parking is gonna be in between. Now I'm going to use my custom park asset if I have it in here, I believe that I do. I do not have my parking lot asset in here, which was a mistake. That is something I absolutely meant to have in here. That said, we can uh, figure some things out. So we are using our parking lot roads right here. So why not just use these to our advantage? 
All right, that is going to do the trick for us. So actually, I think that all's well that ends well. And this might have been one of those serendipitous situations where what you wanted to do didn't work and maybe what you got is even better. So just uh, <laughs> sometimes accept that things aren't going to work out the way you want and it might be better for it. So let's grab these. We'll place these here and then we'll place some accessible parking. Maybe an EV stall or two in the back and then a couple more parking stalls. Okay, looking good there. We need some landscaping if this is going to be done. So let's go ahead and add in just a little bit of landscaping. Okay, so now this is a gigantic cul-de-sac, so we need to fix that. Everyone is leaving out here, but we've got landscaping. We're doing good in that regard. So the problem is over here, we were able to, to enter right onto Smith Street, Smith Way, whatever you want to call it. Over here, we don't have that luxury. So we are going to add in one more connection here, probably Meadow Street, connect that right in. And that will give us two ways in and out of here. I don't want to get this too close to this intersection right here. That's why we're not using this connection. Just way too close. So let's go ahead. We'll get that going. And I want this to 90 onto the road. And I can tell that it's a 90 because I'm getting that uh, the center line to line up very nicely with this. Do the exact same thing here. There we go. Now, again, this is ugly. These roads do not interface well with one another. So we will take these vanilla two lane roads and add those. And I'm going to convert these so we don't get some parking here. Well, we will go with the wide sidewalks in these particular instances. They blend a little bit better with the parking lot roads anyway. So feeling very good about that. We're oh my goodness. We're still burning. <laughs> All right. We're just going to ignore that again. There's one more thing I really want to do over here, and that is go through and I want to see if we can create some sort of ditch and I can't do it. It's too close, which is something I was worried about. I'm going to see, can I just grab this height right here? Right mouse click over here, left mouse click here. No, no ditches for us. No ditches for us. And that's okay. Since we can't have a ditch, we actually are going to repurpose this though and have a stormwater pond. That is going to be something with all of this impervious that is absolutely necessary. So let's pop this down a little bit further. This is going to have to be deep because it's not very big in terms of surface area. So I was having a conflict here where I wanted to place some of these long grasses along here, but I was bumping into this road asset for our parking lot roads. So I used move it to clone this in place and now I'm able to place those in there. It's letting me get away with one. So <laughs> sometimes you've got to do that. You've got to just do what you need to do, what you need to do to make things happen. And this is one of those instances using move it to get this closer to this than where the game would prefer. And I'm much happier with the results of this. There we go. So to me, that feels good and natural. And things are looking good here. I really, really like the way that this is turning out so far. And I think that all we can really do is admire our fire and have a brief city tour. Okay, so we have reached nighttime and uh, we've missed one last thing that's going to really take this up to the next level and that is our dives. We don't have any bars in here and I thought it would be, would be nice if we have all of these hotels to give everyone a place to grab a drink and have a nightcap. 
So we have the perfect assets for this. So let's come in here and type in bar. And we've got some after dark assets, but the, the one I'm looking for in particular is from University Cities right here. We're gonna go for the sky bar corner. And I just think it, it would fit to have something like that in here. Truthfully, we could go for something else as well. And I've got trees. Oh, look at we go. There we go. <laughs> we'll get rid of those. We could also go for like a big bite or something like that. Some sort of roadway oriented use. All right. Well, I'm going to find this because we need it. And whoa, we've got a power issue. All right. Let's boost up our nightly power. And actually... We lowered our budget before, and that's probably half of our problem. Same thing with garbage. Oh, to balance our budget, we've made our citizens suffer. That is not good. <laughs> Let's see if that does the trick for us. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> when you realize that you've created all the problems. Oh, boy. That stinks. All right. Let's find that restaurant. We'll be right back. Okay, and it's called the level one three by two shop. <laughs> so no wonder I couldn't find it, <laughs> but there we go. We've got it and I am very happy. There is interestingly no parking associated with either of these assets. I think that we are just going to live with it now. I want to bring in my custom asset and then we'll probably start working that into the build in a couple of locations, such as near the big bite here and the sky bar. But now we've got a place to grab a bite to eat, grab a drink, and I think that we are moving in a good spot with this, and I hope that you agree. If you enjoyed this, please consider hitting the like button. If you are not subscribed, please consider doing so. And I really wanna thank you for joining me. This has been a really fun series for me so far, and it seems like you all really enjoy it as well. And I appreciate that. Thank you so much. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.